Hey, everybody. We are live at the Pace Studios in New York right now with Grace Potter. Grace Potter, thank you for Hi. being here Good in all of here. your symmetrical glory. This I is outstanding. I'm symmetrical today. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And every day. This is, dude, this is great, man. We've been uh, sincerely talking about, we've been trying to make this happen for the entire existence of this studio, and I'm very glad that you're here today. I'm so happy. And it's, it's, it's quite an honor to be to be among the tape reels, you know, well, like, and amongst y- your tape, my your, tape your reels, tapes are sitting did, on my desk right now. We went hunting and found, we found me in here, which means I've been around a long time. The tape on one of those tapes, the, uh, like the tape on the spine peeled yeah. back and you know, it used to be on the tape that what? now, uh, the comedian Eugene Merman, what, you know, uh, Bob's burgers, Eugene. Yeah. Mer- yeah. Dude, he did a day trotter session where he just talked Why about, Why would they record over? that well i mean it's digitized i guess the tape is not cheap that's true yeah he just wow. talked about having gotten a traffic ticket and it's hilarious it's on the internet it's oh man good. i really hope there's just like ghosts of his voice like twinkling through my songs you know I, it's not really how tape works but maybe maybe yeah well i have no follow-up questions on that maybe that is how tape works now <laughs> i i decided that's how it works yeah so science <laughs> science um, thank you for coming here and doing this. You yeah. are playing uh, three songs off of Daylight, which, congratulations to you, is coming out on October 25th on Fantasy. Yes. And uh, can you tell us what's coming up first today? Well, yeah, the first song I'm doing is, um, it's a song called Everyday Love. No, it's not called Everyday Love. See, this is the problem. I have songs that I have ev- Empty Heart, Everyday Love, and Every Heartbeat. This is basically the same name, but they're very different songs. Wait, I wrote Love Is Love. Is that also a song? That's also a song. Okay. There's a lot of loves and hearts and everys. So, yeah. So this song is the first one I'm going to do. I'm going to do Love Is Love last because it's got the highest notes in it, and so my voice will be warmed up by then. <laughs> there's, there's honey and hot water over there if you need I, anything. You know, I might, I might take you up on that. And there's the a half of Modelo right there if and you want. And that's right. It's you did offer help, me the Modelo. Yeah, but. half of it. I'll share it with you later. Okay. Um, I, I want to do Every Heartbeat first because, um, because it's a great, it, it's an engaging song for me. It gets my heart happy. So I figured it would be a nice little warm up. Um, and yeah, it was, it was, I wrote it about midway through the process of making this record and also, as I was um, expanding my family, I was I was pregnant with my son, and um, after sort of a lot of earthquakes, metaphorical earthquakes in my life, things were starting to finally feel settled, and it was it was a good time. So I wanted to write a song to sort of celebrate that. Um, so it's called Every Heartbeat, not everyday love, not empty heart, not love is love. Every heartbeat. Here we go. Every song I sing Sounds like I'm calling to you I'm falling harder day by day And every word you speak The doubts that lingered in me Begin to slowly fade away I'm hoping that the morning Is gonna make it here on I can't wait to find you by my side I can feel you and you can feel me and I fall deeper with every heartbeat and when you call me I'll come running I fall
you and thank you for sharing uh the song and congratulations to you on a kid you, the kid uh, yeah you made a kid i made one yeah i did it good for you thank you yeah it was it was a wild journey but um uh I, i'm really glad i did it I, it was very much a part of the process of making this record uh i didn't know if i was going to anymore um and he inspired me to want to sing again uh, before that i had been doing no singing like just fully off the map, um, like hiding in the woods, gardening, painting houses and good. I mean, that's, that is time well spent. Yeah. Also, I mean, you have to recharge batteries. So good for you for getting off the grid and, uh, I don't know, building a teepee or whatever you did. We, we literally had, had a teepee. We, yeah. we slept in a teepee for I know. A I, year. I visualized that. I know exactly yeah. what that looked like yeah. for you. <laughs> Um, how does does the does he respond uh, to anything in particular? What are his favorite songs? He knows this is his song. He thinks this is his song. It's actually a song about both my beautiful men in my life, because I hadn't heard Sagan's voice, um, but I'd heard Eric's, and uh, my husband Eric Valentine is also the producer of Daylight and who is right behind the who's black right curtain behind right there. now. He's right behind Eric, the black curtain. Bob. He's the man Hello. behind the curtain. There's, yeah, and, and actually, um, Eric, can I hand this guitar to you for a second? Because it's out of tune, and I want to talk, because if I tune, I won't be able to talk. I'll just be like, don't talk to me right now, I'm tuning. Can I, can I borrow you? Hang on. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is. I really just hey. wanted everybody to see him. There's my man. All right. Because it, it did, did you hear how out of tune it was? It was a little funky in spots, but. You know. You're a little funky in spots. Yeah, I know. Okay. What else do you want to talk about? We're going to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I love that you are. I, I will need it back, but I'll, I'll, do, I'll yeah. do Shout It Out next, and then I'll do Love Is Love Last. Okay, so you want to grab that one? Yeah. I'll put it in the stand. I love that Birkenstocks are happening in your life right oh, now, yeah. Eric. The, the, that's the, the, only, it's the only way he'll wear shoes at all. Yeah. yeah. And they're the rubber kind, not the leather kind. Yeah. That way he can go crawfishing. <laughs> so, hey, where do you guys, um, are there, where do you live? We live in Topanga, California. Where do you go for crawfish in that canyon? We have, there's some secret spots I can't talk about. I, okay. I would actually be, I would be run out of town. Um, right. It's just you and David Crosby that know about them. There's, there's some deep canyon um, legend and lore and there's ways to get there that it took me two and a half years and like I had to befriend like three local gypsies and a wizard in order to find out where it was. And then they still wouldn't take me. And I had to like find it myself. It's so. kind of like 0. 0.2 miles on your odometer, and then this two track real. at the cross. At yeah. the fourth guardrail, don't turn right, but think left, and then continue stepping forward until you well, reach the portal. I'm glad that you have that opportunity to, to I put on those love it. rubber flip flops and go <laughs> crawfishing. I mean, that's that we've, is cool. We've caught three so far <laughs> in the creek, that's, but that's more than none. Yeah, yeah, it is less impressive than I had hoped you were going to say. I thought you were going to say a much higher number than that. No, but. three. But like you know, you have to understand like sources of water, natural sources of water in California in general, but in Southern, Southern California Cal yeah. especially. It's a miracle, and the fact that the creek is still running in Topanga this year, it's like it's been, I think it's been like 30 years since it's run through the entire year, so. 
they crawl up the creek slowly. So we have the creek runs right by our house as well. But yeah. the chupacabras get them, which is probably why you only exactly. got three and not like fifty. But if you step through the portal, there it's a chupacabra free dimension. Outstanding. Dude, I love everything about this. Do you want to hang out in life? Like yeah. you want my phone number? Should yeah. we all just hang out? Yeah. Good. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Good. I'm enjoying this very, very much. And wait, uh, fuck, I meant to say a bunch of things. Uh, yeah, we should talk we, about the yes, bunch of yeah, things. Yeah. Can talk, we yeah. can we talk about some of the guest appearances on this album? Can we talk yes. about there's a player named Ben Montaigne who's pretty good at playing? Uh, just They're, a little keyboardist from Tom Petty and the Heartbreaker. You're sitting right in front of the Tom Petty tape right now, oh, which definitely has Ben Montaigne on so it. So cool. Yeah, I really, I have to say, like, the weirdest part about all this and stepping into this room is the the amount of history and the amount of connections I have to a lot of rock and, and music history that I, it means I must have been around a long time if I have met and collaborated with some of these people. Well, I mean, I've got a camera on me right now, which I will cut to. I mean, this is very literally your tapes from, from 2008. Which Day Trotter. This thing, and yeah, and this performance. My handwriting is tapes. on there, yeah is about to become part of this archive as well. So it's like a living history, living history wall. This is, I mean, I'm in music nerd heaven. But yeah, so when Benmont came in, he brought his, his gear from, from tour. He had, you know, it, there's a big road case parked out in front of Eric's studio. It just said heartbreakers on the side of it. And like everybody that day took a picture in front of that road case. <laughs> Uh, but he he was in the studio for several days, and he, he he had so much fun. We just kept having him back for for many different songs, um, because you know I really think this record represented um, a sound that he connected with a lot. And um, he also just had a kid. Our kids are only like three weeks apart, so nice. um, so we really bonded over that. But um, and he correct me if I'm wrong, but he's kind of a Laurel Canyon vibey sort of a Canyon is. LA dude, also, right? He's just over the canyon, I believe he's in Tarzana, and um, he's been. We've we've collaborated before. We did a, a Linda Ronstadt tribute. It was the first time we played together. It was I did a song with Dawes, and another song later in the evening with Lucius. Um, which again, connections on connections. Lucius also, also on the makes record. major appearances on the record. And um, I arm wrestled with Taylor Goldsmith not that long ago. Amazing. Did yeah. you win? Did he win? It was a draw. We just we just stopped. I think that sounds like you were being really nice. Well, yeah, but he had to He's strong though. Play music and I didn't want to be you responsible for ruining the Newport Folk Festival. It was probably wise. Yeah. I think you made the right decision. <laughs> yeah. But still, I mean, I'd like to see that. Yeah. Well, connections upon connections, connections upon connections. Larry Goldings was another keyboard player who joined us. Um, there's a, a very the contingency of musicians in in LA who are on the road and, and touring a lot of times, and then you know they just happen to be home. Like a lot of people I'd been wanting to collaborate with, all happened to be available right around the time that we were making the record. So um, I brought in my core band, um, which at the time was is uh, Matt Musty on drums. Um, Benny Yurko, my longtime guitarist since Nocturnals era. Um, Eliza Hardy Jones plays keys with me on the road, but we had, she's in Philly and she was touring with Iron and Wine. So that's why we had to source out keyboard players, which not, not a bad problem when Ben Montage and Larry Goldings and Tyler Chester are available. So it was yeah. a great, a great group of people. The keyboard player from Iron and Maiden was not available. So you went with Ben Tench instead? I tried. I tried. Yes, nice. exactly. <laughs> nice. Um, we are. There's more music. There's a bunch more music. We're there gonna is. hear two, more, two more. Two more right? songs. Yeah. I what's have uh, what's coming up next? So um, while my other guitarist, I, I need to get I need to get my stuff together. Things are falling out of tune left and right. Um, but I want to do. This wasn't a planned song, but I think it would. I think it will go well with this setting. Um, this is a song that it's the first song I recorded live that made us realize that we should just do the whole album live. So when we were demoing songs, it was just me and Eric, so there was a lot of like just layering, you know, like I'd do the guitar part, then I'd do the vocal, then he'd do drums and add bass and add key like keyboards and everything. But this was one where it was literally just me on the electric guitar, me singing vocals, and Eric playing drums, and it was done. We, I mean, we didn't need to add anything to it. It felt incredibly complete. Um, so that inspired the entire process of scheduling a live studio uh, session, which turned into the daylight sessions, which everything you hear on this record was done live, including 
my vocals. The only thing we didn't do was Lucius because they were still on tour with Roger Waters at the time. But yeah, they're good at they're good at singing. I like their voices. They're really good at singing. I can't. I could talk about Lucius. This whole interview could just be about Lucius. Yeah, I love them so much, dude. Their style. I mean, there's yes. a lot of words to say about the the symmetry of those two and that microphone. Oh my goodness, I that's know, a good band. I know. It's they're they're exceptional. Very much kindred spirits, and I think musically. When you can find a collection of people who can agree and they don't even need to talk about it, there's just a shorthand there that um, is in, it's very relaxing for me because I don't speak music very well. When people say things like, uh, "Is that the diminished fifth? Actually, I believe it. It passed. There's a passing chord there that's a seven thirty four chord. I don't know what any of that means. I just know what it sounds like. And well, so, so you and I can communicate very yes. well about music because I asked you, are you going to do the fancies or are you going to do just like Am the regular? Am I going to be doing any fancies? The answer That's was, I don't I know, like kind of between the fancies and the regulars. I'm doing some fancies, but I'm not very fancy, especially on acoustic guitar when I'm sick. Um, I am sick. Did you know that? I shouldn't have shook your hand. Sorry, right. I'm glad I that bare, I didn't share this Modelo with you. Bare handshake and now we're going to share beer. Um, but... Yeah, I'm, I got sick uh, over the weekend at, at, at my music festival. Oh, God, You're this is out North of tune as well. Points North? Grand Point the, North, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, My friend Pam said to say hi to you. Pam? Yeah. Hi, Pam. Pam Nation. Pam Nation. She had something to do with that festival. She was there. Yeah. She was there. There's a picture of you and her. I took a picture with Pam Nation. Totally. She might be here like any minute. That's she said fantastic. She was stop by. I, I have to see that picture so I can remember because I'm. It was a big weekend. She and is a very symmetrical person as well. So, s- symmetry. So, you, when you say symmetrical, are, do you mean, are you specifically referring to facial symmetry? Facial I mean, Denzel symmetry. Washington is a very symmetrical person. Yeah. Yes, he is. You know, hence. Yes. Um, I, we've been talking about it because I've been told that I have a good side and a bad side. Yeah. Um, but you were told that by an 80 year old Hollywood dude. Yes. Like a real, like, you got to keep your eyes to the left because, yeah. you know, you got to show off your beauty mark. So his opinion could potentially just be disregarded. Both of your I sides so. are good and they look just the same as the other. I think it doesn't, though. I think I have a slightly more mannish vibe on my right side. Because, like, whenever I want to cross you dress, fight, you just. Yeah, if I want to fight, if I want to look mean or, like, don't cross me, I just give you the... I don't, I don't, actually, I can't do it because I got the bangs in the way, but I'll put on my Howard Hughes outfit and you'll understand completely. It'll, it'll all make sense. All right, I'm almost tuned up here. Hold the phone. This is the greatest, this is the greatest live broadcast ever, huh? <laughs> Me tuning guitars and Dude, we did. Amanda, Amanda Palmer took a bathroom break in the middle of hers. Oh, that was okay. the longest one we ever did. That makes me happy. Yeah, there was a beer run and there was a bathroom break. There's a beer run in the middle of the. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, and we're out of beer. I'm okay with that. All right. I already had wine, coffee, and turmeric tea today, so I'm, nice. I'm doing great. Okay, this is a song called Shout It Out. Plugged in. Sorry. Uh, are you happy with the mic sound or do you need it plugged in? I can plug in. I know I know what's happening. Do I? Do I really know what's happening? Also, this still feels like it's really out of tune. Intonation, intonation, uh 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 I think we'll be good there. We're, we're, we're better. Okay, shout it out. I swear I heard you say I love you. Rolled my suitcase down the hall But then again it might have been The wheels inside my mind Trying to make sense of it all I swear I heard you say I'm sorry I drove off with all my things 
then again it might have been the Santa Ana winds blowing through my guitar strings cause you don't talk about forgiveness you don't talk about your pain come to think of it my darling you don't say much of anything but I can see there's so much you need to say So shout it out If you know this is the end I don't love you Ain't the kind of thing You say under your breath Shout it out If you know Crying as they rushed me down the hall. I needed you to tell me everything would be all right, but you said nothing at all. And you don't talk about the sorrow. You never spoke about our pain Come to think of it, my darling You never said much of anything But you can't hide what's in your eyes There's so much you need to say yeah. So shout it out If you know this is Just ain't the kind of thing you say under your breath Shout it out if you never want to see me again Just shout it out, shout it out, shout it out oh, oh, oh. And now my house is full So shout it out If you know this is the end I don't love you Ain't the kind of thing you just say under your breath Shout it out If you never want to see me guys thank you this is great uh the this room appreciates you very much the internet appreciates you appreciates you very much Thanks, spain internet. is here vermont is here manchester <laughs> manchester says i've never heard of grace potter i'm very much looking forward to this oh cool yeah so you got a new fan hi manchester yeah that's got to be refreshing to some extent right it's I mean, super you're refreshing recognizable i would recognize you on the street oh man i haven't been recognized on the street in so long I, I, yeah, but see, I would recognize you on the street and I don't know you. So well, I think yeah, it's more like a cosmic recognition. If like, I got rid of this, I would look much dead. Well, yes, I agree with you actually you know? about that cosmic Just like, yes, universe. Thank you. I know you, you know me, we're good. Yeah. But, but that's cool. I, I love making new fans and you know, it's, it's weird when you're on the upswing of a career and everywhere you go is I've never heard of her before. And then slowly that changes and suddenly I'm, 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 like known 
but um but like I go to the store every day to you know get things and you don't have people for that I don't have people for that I I do have friends who would get me things if I asked them to but I, I like going to the store to get bread and it's a really nice yeah. store yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really nice grocery store. I'm friendly with my deli lady as yeah. well. It's nice. That it's just human joyful. Human connection is way cooler than Fresh Direct. Well, I I don't even know what Fresh Direct means. I don't even know what that is. Is that a thing? Dude, what? what? Do you think they deliver anything in Topanga other than weed? Uh, well, At all? <laughs> yeah, no, well, Fresh Direct delivers no. food to Topanga Canyon for sure. It's a uh, delivery service by which you are able to get food without going to the store. What? Yeah. Amazon Fresh delivered for a while, but then... um. Uh, I don't know why they stopped. They were like, you guys are too far out there and canyons are scary. Do you run into David Crosby ever? No, and I want to so bad. Yeah. But um, but I run into all kinds of people in the canyon. This you, you and McGregor frequents our coffee shop. Are you in the mo- are you in that uh the Jacob Dylan uh what was it called? Uh Echoes in the Canyon, I think. Um it, is it the thing that he did with Butch Walker? Well, that answers the question. You're not in it. I'm not in it. I'm definitely not in it. <laughs> I think Ben Tench is. Tom Petty is in it. They've shot a that lot of segments. Echoes in the Canyon sounds like a great name. Yeah. Did they do it in Theatricum Botanicum? I don't know. I don't know. What the, yes. Yes. Whatever you say. For sure they did. Yeah. I, um, I, I'm just getting into this world, you know? I mean, last year, Jackson Brown came into the canyon to rehearse with me at a, a venue um, because I, I don't like rehearsing at rehearsal spaces. I like rehearsing like as if it's going to be the real show. And then sometimes we'll just invite people in to watch rehearsal because I don't like rehearsing at all. So the less it seems like rehearsal, the more likely I am to actually stick it out and like rehearse. Well, um, I mean, that's what this is to a certain extent, it is. right? I mean, it's use, use it for what it's worth for the, the rehearsal value of it. I'm super learning how to play these songs right in front of you all right now. And you're also sitting right in front of the Jackson Brown and Carol King tapes Ooh. of, um, except, Jesus, what did I just say? James Taylor and Carol King, but also Jackson Brown. James Taylor and Carol King recorded at, at Barefoot. Oh, so did Jackson Brown, actually, now that I think about it. We've got a wall of records at the studio when you first walk in at Eric's studio that he, you know, it was a private studio for the last um, 17 years that, that he's been running it. But when we moved out to the canyon, he actually opened it up and made it like for commercial use and so there were all these amazing photos around of like Stevie Wonder rehearsing with his band in the in Studio A and like um Jackson Brown made uh I believe it was the record with these days on it like uh, uh, he only he didn't do the whole record there but he recorded certain songs there James Taylor apparently uh invented his like mattress like isolation from guitar playing to vocal so there's no bleed between the two thing there there's a lot of wild old stories in that place. but Literally um, stick a mattress between the vocal mic and the guitar yeah, mic? Wow. Yeah. It, it, it started with piano, and then I think it, it transferred, that technology transferred over to his acoustic guitar as well. I can't imagine. I want to be able to see what I'm doing on the guitar. There's a mattress between my head and the... No. Yeah, just it. muscle memory takes over. I mean, I would imagine you could play pretty well even if you couldn't see your hands, but I, it's weird. Well, I can't see because I'm legally blind anyway, so what am I talking about? Put a mattress here. Let's do it. Um, let us speak about what you're doing pretty soon. I don't know how many days this is from now, but September 21st is in the future, and uh, Bourbon and Beyond Festival is happening. Yes. You're going to be at it in, in Louisville. Louisville. That sounds fun. Yeah. Um, and then uh, live from here, that's the the... Chris yes, Steely thing, Steely. right? At Hardly Strictly? Yes. That's going to be great. That's going to be an amazing time. It's a good reunion as well because um, I haven't seen him in forever. And um, it's a really cool small world thing. Um, and that format is I saw him yeah. at Town Hall doing live from here. And uh, Jeff uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Is it Jeff Daniels To Kill a Mockingbird? Yeah, Jeff Daniels showed up and did the whole Atticus Finch. Oh. Thing, and no one knew what was happening. And it was clear that they were just like completely improvising at all times. Like there's just music stands in front of them and everyone is learning songs on the fly. The format's Absolutely. changing. So I'm really excited about his band because I know they, they, they can and will learn whatever they need to and or do it on the spot, which is just that, you know, that classic style of radio. The, the original style of broadcast was like, we don't know what's going to happen, but you better be good at it. Otherwise, you're out. So these guys are super pros, guys and gals, actually, lest we forget women 
are also very good musicians, as it turns out. Well, that's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, that's happening at Hartley Strictly Bluegrass on October 4th in San Francisco. And then you're at the Rustic in Dallas on November 9th. And then November 15th, you're at the Forum Auditorium in Harrisburg, PA. And that is all of the shows that I know about. They're all up at gracepotter.com. Yep. That's all my shows so far, but there's a big tour announcement coming um, for. Do you want to do it right daylight. now? I don't. I don't know what's. Ha- I mean, if I knew what exactly the dates were and where they were, I would just roll them out right now. But I know that starting in January, things are going to get pretty serious. Nice. I'm going to be. I'm going to be getting back on that tour bus and making a home of it. You know. Does the kid come with giant earmuffs? Oh yeah. Nice. Sagan. Sagan will be on the road with us. It's a family affair. I. I wouldn't have had a child. If I hadn't, basically, I actually, let's put that the other way. I wouldn't have come back out on the road and, or started making music again if it wasn't for him. So the idea of not bringing him on the road, that, that's just bizarre to me. So if, if it doesn't work to have him on the road, then I'm just not on the road. Um, so I, I, but he loves it. He's an awesome traveler. He loves the music. People have been meeting him as, as we've been going. He, he tends to pass out right around like the third or fourth song of the set. What a puss. I know, I know. He's What's only 20 months that? old, dude. Give him a break. I, uh, but yeah, I guess. He, what, what happens is I usually play one of his songs that he knows, and then he's like, all right, now I know. I can go to bed. I'm, mom, mom just sang me my lullaby. Mm. Meanwhile, the subwoofer's just like, boosh, boosh, boosh. I think it's I think it's a thing that yeah. low end. That kid is going to be cool as hell his he's entire all, life. He's a pretty cool kid. Yeah, I'm, I I think it'll be good for him. And if it isn't, and it turns out that it's not great to have a kid on the road in my own circumstance, then I'll just take a break and you know um, Come find back my here way. And just play like every day. You're invited every single day to do this if you want. I think it might just be here broadcasting until Sagan's old enough to want to be back on the road. All right. All right. So. What else are we going to talk about? Well, we could, um, I don't, I'm out of shit. I'm out of shit. You're completely. so out of shit. Yeah. Um, do, would you like to play music? Yes. I have to get my capo. And so Eric, this is the tuned guitar. Yes. I think it is. Or is there a different guitar? I, I believe that's the one. Yeah. Okay. Look, and Eric's back again. He's back. This is the tuned guitar. Yeah, you need your, you want your capo? I do need my capo and I'm going to plug in too. Okay. Is it okay for me to unplug the other guitar? Yes. Okay, I don't want to have a big cracking sound. Oh, that's harder than it seems. Hold up. Will you hold this for a second while I unplug this one? Yeah. I'm going to throw my back out pulling a cable out of the guitar. Not acceptable. Dude, I hurt myself sleeping last night. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't what you were doing right before well, you two went nights to bed? Ago, I, I, yeah, I didn't make it to bed last night. Two nights ago, I hurt myself sleeping. I just want to point out that are you wearing, you're wearing someone else's socks and underwear as we speak, correct? E- yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just want the green I, socks. Thank you, Jeff, for this T-shirt and the yeah, boxers Jeff, and the wait socks. Up, wait Thanks, rocking. Grace, for calling this yes. out. Yes. Well, internet. listen. You know, you got to be careful. I am like the opposite of uh, a secret keeper. The second I know something, it's out. Yeah. No, I've just found that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. Uh, if someone tells me something and says this is a secret, I will take it to the grave. So all you have to do—that's the code word. Just say Grace. This is secret. This is private information, not for broadcast. And I would have not nice. said it. Well, but literally everything else that happened last night is a secret. I, I don't know anything else. That's all I heard was that you woke up with no socks or shoes in a poncho with nothing Jesus else on. Jesus Christ, stop. <laughs> okay, one more song. And this one is going to feature in a very exciting moment where I change keys and transpose the entire song with a capo mid-song. So oh. we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. Wish me luck, everybody. This is the lead-off track on Daylight. It's the first song that hit the radio waves, and um, it's the first song that Eric and I wrote for the record, um, and it's called Love is Love. I don't care about pride. I don't care I want to call you. I don't care I've gone off. The rails, I'm crazy falling for you. Oh, well, I promised him I would never stray, but I'm thinking about you every day. Now I'm standing here outside your door. I just can't fight this anymore.
said I was a saint I never said I'd be his savior I never say I didn't try to fight against my human nature So let the past and future fall away I will worship these wounds every day The cuts that bleed from my mistakes Couldn't keep my heart from giving way Thank you. I love these songs. I love the record. It's out on October 25th. So congratulations to you. The record is called Daylight. We just heard songs from it. Thank you for coming and playing. Thank you for having and, me. And uh, travel safely, please. There's four tour dates that I know about. The Bourbon and Beyond Fest in Louisville on September 21st. I've already said all of these You've words. You've already done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all at the Go Grace Potter. Go to the Potter. website, people. Well, you know what to do. But worth reiterating, live from here uh, at Hardly Strictly That's gonna on be October rad. 4th, it's going to be extra, extra cool. Um, enjoy all of those things and uh, take care of Sagan's ears and travel safely and thank you seriously so much and come back every day. I will. I'll be here. Okay. Thank you.